Hey knitters, I'm Jana with Pearl Together and I'm back to you this week with part three of our customizable toe up sock series, the updated version. So this week we're gonna knit the heel flap that goes on the bottom of your heel and then turn the heel to change directions of knitting and start knitting up the leg of your sock. So before we get started with that, I wanna give a big public thank you to our two new patrons that joined the Pearl Together patron community this week. Thanks so much to Debbie and Barbie for joining me over at www.patreon.com forward slash Pearl Together. They pledged a small monthly amount and in trade will receive some perks and special things that I offer over there. So check that out if you want to. The link is down below in the video description. All right, let's get started on that heel flap. Okay, so I've knitted far enough now that my daughter's trying on her sock and you can see here that here's her arch and there's a clear there's a clear place right here where the pad of her heel begins. We want to knit until the last row is right there at the beginning. I mean, I might have knitted a row or two extra, but that's okay. Um, you know, on occasion they get thrown in the dryer accidentally. So I, it's okay to have a little extra, but right here I'm going to have... Well, let's see, that's probably going to be two and a half to three inches from the very end of her heel. It's probably two and three quarter inches that will be the heel flap. Okay, so I'm ready to begin the heel flap. I've just finished my round and I have the front side of the sock facing me. Here's the sole, you know, this is the, the bottom or the bottom of the foot or the sole stitches. So now, instead of continuing to knit across here, what I'm gonna do now is only, we're only going to go back and forth across the sole stitches or the bottom of the foot stitches. So instead of starting this new round, I'm going to go into the same stitch I just completed with my yarn in the front because I'm gonna go in as if to purl. Yarn's in front. And I'm going to slip the first stitch as if to purl, and then I'm gonna purl my way back across these sole stitches. Now this is one of the only times that I am aware of that you will ever knit backwards on your work with the inside of the work facing you. And the, you know, the front of your garment here and you're knitting on the needle that's furthest away from you. We do not normally knit this way, but we are here because we're knitting back and forth now on the sole stitches to create the heel flap. So all of these stitches in the front here are just gonna rest. They're just gonna wait here on the front half of the sock. So if you're using double points or two circulars, you're just letting these stitches rest and we're only going to work on the, the sole stitches to create the heel flap, which is at this point really the bottom of the foot flap. Okay, but I like to have that reinforced area along the bottom of my foot because that's where I normally wear through. So you can see these other socks that we that I did in the first customizable toe up series. So this is the point we're at right here and we're gonna begin this slip stitch reinforcement pattern and knit this padded area right here. So slip the first stitch as if to purl and then just purl your way across to the end of the row and then we'll turn our work. When you get to the end of the row, simply turn your work over so that now the, the bottom of the foot stitches are facing you. Slip the first stitch again as if to purl. Slip the first stitch as if to purl with the yarn in back this time. We're just gonna slip this as if to purl. And then you're gonna knit, knit the next one. Slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, and you're gonna do that all the way across, alternating slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, all the way across. That's what's creating that reinforcement because you're slipping this stitch and then you're taking this stitch across behind. And when you do that, you create a little mini float there, see? And that's what creates that extra reinforcement. All right, I'm almost to the end and I'm gonna slip one and knit the last stitch through the back loop. The reason that I prefer to do that is because by knitting in the back loop, you're turning that stitch 180 degrees and it will make it easier to pick up. You're opened up that stitch to the side and it'll make it easier for us to work with it later. So don't worry about that for right now, you'll see what I mean. We're gonna turn your work again. 
Now, one thing I neglected to mention, um, if you're using Magic Loop, you know, you have your stitches divided in half already. If you're using a nine inch circular, you're gonna want to divide your stitches in half and put a marker and then make sure that you have things arranged such that you can knit your, your bottom of the, you can knit your flap. Okay, so if you're using a nine inch circular, you'll just wanna uh, figure out how to go about separating your stitches in half with the beginning of the marker here and you put another beginning of the round marker here and just knit back and forth on that one section. Uh, half the number of stitches that you have. So again, on the back side where the purl bumps are facing us, we're gonna slip as if to purl with the yarn in front this time because we're just gonna purl back across. So you're always just gonna purl the second row after you slip the first one, and then you're doing your slip one, knit one reinforcement on the knit side. We're gonna repeat these two rows until you have roughly the same number of stitches or the same number of rows as you have stitches. So in my case here, I have 36 stitches on my heel flap and I will have 36 rows, a minimum of 36 rows. Now we all know that net stitches are not exactly square. So your heel flap is going to become rectangular. If you have a high arch, you might want to make your heel flap a little bit longer. Here, let me show you why. So this is all about geometry. You can see that this is a triangle. And if you have a longer, if this circumference of your foot here, your diagonal heel measurement is larger because, larger than average, because you have a high instep, then you want to make this heel flap longer so that this distance is bigger. And so it accommodates your higher arch. You're just gonna wanna know that this needs to be at least two and a half to three inches and maybe a little bit longer if you tend to have a higher instep, then we'll add a few more rows, okay? So normally though, if you have 36 stitches across here on each half, you're gonna make a minimum of 36 rows of a heel flap. You might even wanna stretch that to 38 or 40 if you tend to have a higher instep, okay? So continue purling your way across and then we're gonna do that slip stitch thing again. When you get to the end of your purl row, just purl all the way to the end. Um, often people ask, should I purl through the back loop? And no, that's not necessary. Um, you just purl all the way to the end and then we'll turn our work and you will slip the first stitch of each row on this heel flap. So you wanna remember to, to slip the first stitch purl wise and then you're either gonna pull your way across like we're doing now, or you're going to do your slip one, knit one sequence. Okay, so I'm to the end of that. When we turn, what's happening here is after you turn your work and then you sl slip the next one, what's happening when you slip the first stitch as if to purl, you're slipping this stitch from this row, you're slipping it up to the next. So slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, and so forth all the way across. What happens though when we slip that first stitch is that it's going to elongate and one slipped stitch on this edge right here is the equivalent of two knitted rows because you knitted one and we're gonna purl our way back. So that slip stitch right there is the equivalent of two rows. When you look here, that slip stitch is worth two rows here. So the reason I'm pointing that out is because you can count 36 rows or you can count 18 slipped stitches on the edge of your heel flap. So it's a little easier to count those 18 or 16 or whatever that is, half the number of the stitches that you're working here. So let me knit this a little bit and I'll show you what those edge stitches are gonna look like after you, you know, get 10 rows in or so. Okay, I'm back just to show you this. I've knitted, I don't know, probably 10 rows back and forth, but that's the equivalent of five of those slip stitches. Now you can see the columns that that creates when we slip that stitch up from the previous row. And so you can count those here to see how many you've done, but you can also see what a nice clean edge that makes over here. And these will be easy to see when we go to pick up our stitches on the edge, much easier than like a garter stitch edge. So you can see that I've done, not counting the one on the needle, I've done one, two, three, four, five 
not counting the blue stitch on the needle there, that gray, this last gray one makes five, or 10 rows here. So you can count the ones we've slipped here, one, two, three, four, five. You could try to count the little ones in between here, um, but it's much easier to count these slipped stitches and just realize that those, each one of those equals two rows of knitting, you know, slip and then back. All right, so you're gonna wanna carry on here at least the same number of rows that is stitches on your needle. So I have 36 here, so I'll want to do 36, a minimum of 36 rows of knitting or 18 chain edge stitches here. Kinda looks like a crochet chain, which is why I call it that, or a slipped stitch edges. Okay, for me though, like I mentioned before, the length of this heel flap determines the circumference around the thickest part of your foot or your instep, you know, this diagonal measurement from the end of your heel to the top of your foot. So for me, I like to knit a couple extra rows. Um, so I'll probably go to 38 or even 40. I think I usually do 40 just because it's a round number and it's easy for me to remember. All right, so you can see I've knitted the heel flap until it's to the end of her heel. And so I might do another row or two, you know, just knit, knit across and purl back one more time and then I'll begin the heel turn. So that's kind of what you want it to look like is her heel flap is beginning right here where the arch ends and the heel pad begins. And I'm gonna do the heel flap for a total of 20 edge chain stitches. I'll double check my count. Okay, the heel flap for this sock is approximately two and a half inches and that's gonna work out just fine as you saw when we tried it on. So now I want to turn the heel. So this is just gonna be a series of short rows that allows us to change the direction of knitting. So we've been going this way and we wanna turn so we can knit back toward the top of our foot. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a little cup shape to cup the back of your heel. And then we'll join back in the round and we'll pick up all these stitches on the side, but we'll wait for that part till next week. We will finish up today by doing the heel turn. So again, just like we have been, go in this first stitch as if to purl and slip it off. So slip the first one, knit the second, carry on with your slip stitch pattern until you are halfway across. So for me, that's gonna be 18 stitches and I'll stop and count them here in a moment. And once we get to halfway, then we're gonna knit two more. So half plus two. All right, 17, 18. Okay, so that's halfway is 18, and I wanna go two more. Now you can choose not to continue on with the slip stitch heel reinforcement, but I do find that helpful. Um, I like that on the back of my heel sometimes. I have narrow heels, and sometimes my, my heels tend to slip in the back of my shoes, so I just find that carrying on with that provides a little bit of um, extra reinforcement on the back of your heel. All right, so we have knitted, carried on with the slip stitch reinforcement, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, to halfway plus two more, whatever that is for you, depending on your stitch count. Now what I'm gonna do is slip, slip, knit to do a decrease. Slip, slip, and knit those two together, knit one. Okay, so again, knit across to halfway, two more, Half plus two, slip, slip, knit, knit one. Turn your work. So now you have the purl side facing you. And we're gonna slip the first one. Purl five. One, two. Now this formula works regardless of the number. Whoops, I split that stitch there. This formula works regardless of the number of heel stitches you have. So for me, I have 36 across, you might have 32, um, just depends on your original cast on or your original uh, stitches across the circumference of your foot or what you increased to. All right, so I have, I turned my work, I slipped one, and now I'm gonna purl one, two, three, four, five. Then I want to purl two together. So this is how we're gonna begin our short rows. Purl two together, purl one. All right, turn your work. 
Now at this point, I like to count that I have the same number of stitches or quote wing stitches is what I call them, hanging out on each side. You'll notice there's a gap right here. That's where we turned our work before. So we have the center stitches. This is the center of the back of the heel. And then we have these stitches here and these stitches here. We wanna make sure that the stitch count is the same on each of the sides of the center stitches. So we have this one and this section need to match in terms of the number. 10, 12, 13. And so there should be 13 from the gap to the end right here as well. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Okay, good. If there's not, if you don't have a matching number, you have gone awry somewhere. So refer to the written instructions for the heel turn, which I will put in the video description down below. So now we're going to slip the first one as if to purl. And if you want to maintain that slip stitch reinforcement, we'll need to consider that for just a moment. You can see that the columns here are the stitches that we've slipped before. So those are gonna be slip stitches again. So you can plainly see that. That's a slip, that's a knit, that's a slip, that's a knit. So next, we slip the first one, we're gonna knit, slip, knit, and we're maintaining that pattern. We will not always, we'll always slip the first one, but we may not knit the second. We may knit two, we will knit the second, we might knit the third as well, depending. The number of these stitches will grow as we close these side gaps. Um, and I'll show you what's gonna happen in a minute. It may not be the same every time. So slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. You can tell that that's a slip because it's on that column. Slip, knit, slip. Now we're going to knit these two together. So slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, knit these two together, slip, slip, knit. So it's a left leaning decrease, knit one. Okay, turn your work, slip, and purl your way back until you get to one stitch before the gap. I should have said that earlier. You do that on the knit side as well. You're working the rows until you get to one stitch before the gap. Then when you purl two together or knit, slip, slip, knit two together, you're closing that gap. So purl two together, purl one. You don't really have to count, actually. You just need to be mindful of what you're doing. So we're always gonna slip the first stitch as if to purl. Now here, if I slip this one, then knit the next, that's gonna mess up my, my columns, isn't it? It'll be opposite. So I wanna kinda look and see where I can tell the columns for the slip are on track. So there's one, that's a slip, knit, slip, knit, slip. Okay, well I don't wanna slip two stitches in a row necessarily, so I'm gonna knit that one instead of slipping it. I'm also gonna knit the next, then get back on track with my slip knit, slip, knit. And you can plainly see where those columns are, the stitches that you've slipped before. You can get back on track with that. Okay, that's a knit. This is a slip, so I'm gonna slip it anyway because I'm gonna do my left leaning decrease because I'm one stitch before the gap here. So slip, slip, knit two together, knit one. You're just gonna continue on in this way until you have used up all these wing stitches and you don't have any more gaps. You you will have continued closing the gap knitting one until you get all the way to the end. So slip one, knit till you get to one stitch before the gap. And just keep doing those two rows until we've gotten all of those outside wing stitches, if you will, it's just what I call them. Make sure we have all those worked, okay? Purl the one stitch before the gap, purl two together, Purl one and turn your work. Okay, and you can see even now we're starting to make that little heel turn for the back of our heel. All right, I'll finish this up and show you what it looks like. The other thing I want to point out is sometimes you'll be going along and you only have one stitch left after you purl two together, purl one, then you'll just have one stitch left when you're turning your work, and that's totally okay. I mean, it seems a little weird and awkward right now, but it's totally fine. And that may very well be the case on our way back here as well. I'm right now determining which is slips and which are knits. Okay, so I am gonna have another knit here before I get back on my sequence. Okay, I'm working my way back across here and I've come to one stitch before the gap. 
nearly. That gap is actually the space between these very last two stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and slip slip knit, decrease those together. And then I won't have one left over to knit one before I turn. And that's totally fine. Just end up how it ends up. And that's okay. So I'm still going to slip my first stitch and purl my way back across. And the same thing will happen where I will purl the last two st stitches together and not have a remaining stitch to work. And that's totally fine. I'm at the last two. I'm going to purl those two together. And whether you have a remaining stitch left to work or not is um, just simply a function of the sequence of this whole thing and how many heel stitches you had on your needle to begin with. So it's it's fine either way. Now what we want to do is just take a moment to admire how awesome that is. So yay, your heel's going to fit nicely right there. And this little magical bit of knitting cups your heel with much comfort. Fantastic. All right. We need to get set up now to for picking up the gusset stitches and starting to knit in the round, starting to knit in the round again counterclockwise. So in order to do that, what I like to do now is slip one and knit my way back across. Now you can carry on the slip stitch reinforcing pattern if you like. If you want to have that a little taller on the back of your heel, that's totally fine. You can you're welcome to do that. Um, I generally don't, but you certainly could. You could carry that on, continue doing that if you wanted to, all the way up the back of the heel until we join back in, till we're back to our original number of stitches and begin our pattern again. So if you wanted to have this whole last, the whole back part be that slip stitch reinforcement, you certainly could. If you want to do that, I would put a marker here, um, clip a marker right there so that you know which are your heel stitches because once we can join up back in the round you won't know which you know 20 18 or 20 stitches that was in the center of the back you won't be able to differentiate that necessarily unless you put markers there so so that's an option i'm just going to knit back across so that i'm set up for next week's video when i show you how we're going to pick up the heel stitches and start knitting the gusset all right, we've turned the heel. Next week, we will go about picking up the gussets. We'll go pick up these edge stitches along the side of the heel flap, and we'll start knitting in the round again. And you'll see all how all that's going to narrow back down to the ankle. So take your ankle measurement so we'll know what how many stitches that we need once we get back down to the top of your ankle. You'll want to know what the circumference of that is. Um, and how that compares with the ball of your foot measurement. Sometimes they're not the same. Most often they're very close, but sometimes not. Sometimes people have wider feet and narrower ankles and vice versa. So go ahead and take that measurement. We'll use the same numbers that you did before with how many stitches per inch you have multiplied by the inches of the circumference at the top of your ankle. And then we'll know how many stitches we're gonna decrease to so that you can finish up and knit the leg. All right, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Check us out over at patreon.com.